Uh, Chair, Chair Larson, are you, you on mute? Okay, Chair Larson, I think you're on mute. I could unmute you. Um, you can go ahead and start the meeting. Looks like you're ready to go, Chair, whenever you're ready. Oh, no. Uh, Chair, we, we can't hear you. Chair Larson, it looks like your audio is on. However, we're not hearing anything. Um, I think um, this happened in the previous meeting. You could go ahead and call that number if you, you, you have difficulty um, with your audio. Uh, Chair Larson, we still can't hear you uh, speaking. However, you are un unmuted. If you um, need the phone number, the phone number. Is listed here. Yeah, I, I have it here, Julie. Uh, it's, yeah, it's 833 548 -0276. And let's see. Do you see that? There's also a meeting ID number. Uh, you want me to share that, is, George? Uh, yeah, I, I can just do it right here. It's it's nine three three two three three four five eight two six. George, I think she's asking for the uh, code again. Okay, yeah, it's uh, the meeting ID is Sure, if you have your email open, I can um, send you, I'll email you the uh, call in info. Do you see that? Do you see that? Um, Chair Larson, I have two phone numbers listed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and allow to talk and uh, go ahead and speak if you want to test your sound.
Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Ah. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So sorry for the delay. Well, I also have an echo, so I can hear myself twice. Can you? Sound good. Can you? Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go oh, ahead, uh, Chair Larson. I'm gonna go ahead and mute you on the on the um, computer and allow just the sound coming from your phone. I guess let's give that a try. Go okay. Ahead. All right. Oh. Are we good? That works. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Well, it is 7:06. We can call this meeting to order, and I apologize for the delay. Um, are we ready to salute the flag? Pledge of Allegiance? I don't oh, believe we're doing this, that for the telepresence meetings. Uh, oh, all right. I thought it would have been interesting. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll definitely acknowledge that. And... <laughs> okay, we'll apologies. make a note that we tried. All right, Joey, okay, do we I need can... a roll call? Sure. I have... Uh... Commissioner Kaduri, Vice Chair Hopkins, Commissioner Gaudenti, uh, present. So that brings a quorum of uh, four. Go ahead and. All uh, right. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Um, we don't have any visitors on this meeting, or are all these strange faces actually our visitors? They're all uh, yeah, people. so they, they're they're part of the uh, applicants team, um, and I'd also like to uh, formally welcome Commissioner Kadori. This is her um, her first uh, HPC hearing. Um, uh -huh. She was uh, uh, sworn in this summer, but uh, yeah, this will be her first hearing. So we uh, want to just welcome her to the the commission, and uh, happy to have her here. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for that, George. Uh, the consent calendar, we need to approve the minutes from the last meeting, uh, July 22nd. Have you all had a chance to look at those minutes and do you have any input on them? Anything, any changes you would like to make? Uh, before we, we get to that, uh, Chair, if, if you can ask if there's um, any uh, public uh, comments for uh, oral communications. If any yes, I kind of skipped any... over that, assuming that everyone here was a city personnel person and that we didn't have any visitors in the room. Do we? Yes, Travis is saying yeah, yes. Other than the uh, applicant's team. All right. So shall we move ahead with oral communications and invite members of the public to address the commission? Yes, if there's any... Um... If, if anyone wants to speak on any items not on the agenda tonight. All right, it looks like everything is on the agenda for these people. Is that correct? All right, and we'll move ahead with uh, approval of the minutes from the July 22nd meeting. Uh, I had a correction for it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I had talked about or asked about the plaques that had been on all the trees, um, and they mentioned that there had been plaques and that they were permanent, permanently displa misplaced. Um, and I think that led to uh, Commissioner Wu's comment about uh, Vargas um, as far as him being, was it the king of Sunnyvale? Something like that? I don't remember. Um, but uh, I just wanted to make sure that we acknowledged that there were plaques originally on the trees and that they've somehow disappeared. That is true as far as I know, because they came to the museum looking for those plaques. It's just not in the minutes, so I wanted that added. All right, thank you. Can you all hear me if I'm not holding my phone? Yeah, okay. Uh, Anything else? Any comments? All right, are we ready to move into the public hearing and general business? Uh, well, we, we sure, have to if we can have a vote on the um, yeah. approval of the minutes with the, yeah, uh, the I, modifications that the vice chair. Thank you, I never remember to do that. Uh, Joey, have you made a note of Don's comments? 
I have, Chair. I've made notes of the uh, modifications. So I'll motion to approve the minutes with my modifications. All right, thank you. A second? Do we have a second? I'll second. Noted, thank you. Thank you, and do we need to vote on that? Yes. All right. We All could, in uh, favor of? Hand up, favor right, in favor of? I can I can call out the vote if you'd like, okay. Chair. Uh, Commissioner Kaduri uh, made a second with Hopkins uh, moving. Um, Chair Larson, vote. Yes. Commissioner Gaudenti. Yes. Yes. Commissioner Wu. Yes. Okay, <laughs> I got a I got a visual from Commissioner Wu that he okayed and. Uh, Motion to approve the minutes as modified. Commissioner Wu, if you could um, try to see if your sound works while we go through this meeting. Thank you. Go ahead and continue, Chair. All right. All right. Public hearing, general business. Proposed project number 20 0924, landmark alteration permit and tree removal permit. George? Uh, well, Chair, uh, this would be uh, if you can ask for the staff uh, presentation. All right. Uh, the staff presentation, please go ahead. And for the moment, I've lost sight of all of you. No worries. Staff. Staff first. Okay, Thanks, I'm back. Now we're pulling up the uh, staff presentation, please. Hold. All right, thank you, Janelle. Um, my name is Sean Menton. I'm with the um, Community Development Planning Division. I'm a principal planner, and I'm working on um, 200 West Tape Street, which is a uh, mixed-use building. Um, as part of that project, it includes a proposal for a landmark alteration permit um, to remove, sorry, to remove one of the redwood trees um, located within the Heritage Grove located in downtown Sunnyvale. There we go. Um, the proposed building that will be located around the existing Heritage Grove um, will be a 12-story mixed-use building with about uh, 481 units and about 25,000 square feet of retail and uh, restaurant space and two levels of underground parking. And for background, um, the proposed project or um, building is part of a development agreement that was approved by council um, back in August. And as part of that development agreement, um, it guarantees uh, specific heights and densities and commercial square footage located within the commercial core, which is block 18 in downtown Sunnyvale. And um, block 18 spans between Iowa and Washington and Matilda and uh, Sunnyvale Avenue. Um, as part of that development agreement, um, there was also environmental review or uh, EIR, uh, which was done as part of that project. It also evaluated the amendments to the downtown specific plan. Um, as part of that project, um, the removal of the redwood tree was also considered in the environmental review. Um, due to the location of the building and how the existing grove um, is located, uh, the environmental review did evaluate removal or relocation. Um, as part of the environmental review document, the city council adopted a statement of overriding considerations for the tree removal. So that allows um, the Heritage Preservation Commission to um, grant the removal or relocation. And this is just a, a site plan for reference of where the commercial core is, um, again, between Matilda and Sunnyvale and Iowa and Washington. Uh, the subject site is outlined here in red and Redwood Square is in green. Okay. 
And the proposed site plan includes um, two, building, um, two buildings um, that are connected over an uh, archway that spans down Francis. Um, you can see the building footprints here in gray. Um, the red dashed outline is the outline of the proposed uh, two-story underground garage. Uh, the green dot is where the location of the proposed uh, removal of redwood tree that's proposed to be removed. Um, as you can see, it is located over the proposed um, uh, two levels of parking garage. Um, the proposed layout has been done so in a way to, to uh, minimize impact to the uh, existing heritage grove, at least the remaining five. Um, if the garage was to be oriented um, to minimize or reduce the uh, removal of that tree, um, then potentially the footprint of the garage would get closer to the remaining five trees. And again, this is just an image of um, the heritage grove. Um, the tree proposed to be removed is circled here in green. Um, the existing heritage grove, the trees are generally in good health. Um, there is some maintenance that will be required. Um, that'll be conditioned as part of the um, project review for the um, building and improvements around heritage grove. Um, tree number six, um, which is the tree proposed to be removed is also in good health. Um, however, relocation has not been recommended due to the size and costs associated with the relocation. And lastly, um, relocation of the tree due to its size is a little bit unpredictable. Um, for a landmark, landmark alteration permit, there are specific findings that have to be made. Um, first is it has to be consistent with the heritage ordinance. Um, as part of the proposal and conditions um, that are recommended conditions of approval, um, staff is recommending that they dedicate uh, one of the new trees that are proposed to be located closer to the remaining five trees um, be rededicated to uh, Manuel Vargas. Um, and additionally, the removed tree would be milled for um, reuse on, and stored on site um, for a certain amount of time for either um, uh, tenant improvements or anybody else in the community um, that wanted to use the wood. Um, the proposed removal would have minimal impact to the grove as the existing five trees will remain in place and the um, proposed underground garage will have minimal impact on the existing root zones of those remaining five trees. Um, additionally, uh, two new trees will be planted um, closer to the grove um, to kind of solidify uh, the existing grove a little bit more. Um, and lastly, um, that it's not an undue hardship. Um, and specifically, the substantial um, building and free configuration would be required if they were to look at um, remaining or keeping the tree on site. Um, and potentially that can have impacts on the um, existing five uh, redwood trees um, that are on the main cluster of the grove. And the um, recommendation is for alternative one, um, which is to approve the landmark alteration permit and tree removal permit, as I noted in the staff report. And that concludes staff's presentation. Thank you. At this point, we want to have a discussion and adoption of final uh, 2021 work plan. Is the floor uh, open for uh, Ch Chair Larson, uh, this would be the point where um, you would ask the uh, commission if they have any questions of staff. Okay. And, and then after that, we would have um, uh, the applicant's presentation. Oh, of course. Okay. All my questions. Thank you. So, commission, do you have any questions for staff in regard to this project? I do. Oh, I also have loud dogs, so I apologize. They're having a wrestling match. Um, the, when you say there's going to be a tree dedicated to Manuel Vargas, what does that mean and what will it entail or involve? Um, it would be a, a rededication of um, one of the new redwood trees to Manuel Vargas. So that would mean a, a new plaque would be put up in his honor and be coordinated with his family. Um, when we do the dedication. And that would occur after the buildings are done and the um, improvements around the heritage um, grove are completed. 
Anybody else? Thank you. I have a question. Um, has there been, you mentioned milling the tree and storing it on site for tenant reuse and community reuse. Has there been any um, consideration of using it in like a site feature or um, site furniture of some sort, kind of keeping it in its, um, you know, on site as a way to kind of re retain the connection between the heritage tree and where it came from? Yes, I believe the applicant has um, taken that into consideration. And I think that would be a good question for the applicant after their presentation. We'll be able to provide you more information on that. That is the same question I had. Could it be used in some way in the new building and in connection and make it apparent that it's connected to the Vargas, the original Vargas tree and family? Any other comments? Questions? All right. All right. So, Chair, I believe the applicant has a presentation. So, this would be the point where they would uh, okay. their PowerPoint. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So want to know, um, would the applicant want uh, remote control or would you like us to um, um, go ahead and forward the slides when, uh, when you know? Uh, if we can do remote control, that'd be great. Okay. While Joey's working that out, I'll introduce myself. I'm Travis Duncan. I work for Saris Regis. We're the residential developer downtown. We've been working on it for about five years now. Um, and this is you know, the first part of the second major phase that's really coming before you. The master plan was approved in August and, and sort of this is the individual projects now moving forward as a result of those master plan approvals. I've got with me on the call this uh, evening, uh, John Leffingwell, um, our arborist who's been working on the site for also about three, four years, uh, and Peter Frankel from Bionic Landscape who's doing the public realm um, portion of the landscape architecture for all of the master plan. Do I have control here, Joey? Yes, Travis, I believe you have control. Um, awesome. So thanks to Sean uh, Mendron for the presentation. He covered a lot of the same things that I was going to say. So I'll, I'll breeze through most of these. Um, Redwood Square is really important. Um, it's the central plaza of our development uh, downtown in Block 18. But it's also one of the preeminent gathering places um, in Sunnyvale due to its proximity to Caltrain, uh, historic Murphy Avenue, and the new Whole Foods AMC. Um, I hope you all have been down there to check it out. They opened last Thursday, Friday. Um, we're really excited. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, we were right at, uh, at sort of ready to open in March and uh, COVID got in the way and we're thrilled to be able to offer those, those opportunities to shop downtown and sort of, um, you know, it's another one of the breadcrumbs showing to where we think downtown's going to be, you know, here very shortly. Um, so just, we've really designed the plan around this redwood grove. And unfortunately there's one tree that just doesn't work within the plan, but that's not to say that it's not a critical piece of both our plan, the downtown specific plan and the overall plan for downtown. Um, so Sean gave you a little bit of insight. I just, there were a couple of folks who I think were not on the, the study session we had um, for the master plan, but just wanted to remind people, this is what this tree has been through. Um, this is the tree right here in this little keyhole. I'm uh, hoping you can see my mouse. Um, it's, it's had a tough life. Um, you know, it, it's, it's protected here in the mall. It's not getting as much exposure as it really wants. Um, and, and you see that kind of in how the tree looks. I mean, it's got this kind of interesting curvature kind of bending to the right in this image. Um, and you see the notes here from Bionic and from John Leffingwell on sort of how this tree approaches the world today. Um, it is in relatively good health. Um, however, it's not a, a prime specimen, if you will, uh, of redwood trees. One other thing that I, I want to note here is this image is a little bit deceptive, but that the, the base of that redwood tree is almost four feet above ground level today. Um, that, that black mulch is really a mound that, that you goes up as you get there. So sort of using this tree and the grove is not very usable space. I mean, it, it's hard to get up there. You're, you're walking through um, mulch. And um, part of the proposal that you'll see in just a minute is sort of 
making this space more usable so the community really can experience these trees the way they ought to be experienced. And, and this is actually direct feedback coming from the Planning Commission um, that's really inspired this idea of a muse through these trees um, that we're really excited about. So uh, it was mentioned, uh, this tree is dedicated to Manuel Vargas, who was Mr. Sunnyvale, um, dedicated to him in 1978 um, as part of the original mall construction. Um, I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Um, if, if it's possible to mute, that would be phenomenal. Thank you. Um, it, the city staff has been in touch with, I believe, the grandson of Manuel Vargas. Um, I'm not sure if he's on the phone tonight. I, I kind of hope he is. Um, we're, we're sort of uh, thrilled that he's open to the idea of rededicating a new tree. I mean, truthfully, this was my biggest fear of um, how do we make, make this right? And we think we've reached a, a really great compromise of rededicating a new tree to the family. Um, Commissioner Hopkins, I believe, asked about the plaques. They have gone missing and they've gone missing predating us sort uh, um, of 2015. Nobody knows where those plaques are. Trudy Ryan, head of planning community development has been looking for them for literally years. Um, I have one action item on my list to sort of hunt through the basement of Macy's to see if that's where they are. Um, but we're going to replace the plaques as part of this new park. We're going to um, get the information back out there so that as part of that muse, that paseo through the trees, um, folks can really understand what when these trees were planted, give them the history, let them experience them more fully, um, that they haven't had that information out there for, for you know, many years. Um, I'm happy to share these slides. I, I, the, the story of all these trees is phenomenal. I, I don't have time to go into it tonight, but it, it's well worth reading into. And, and we're fortunate to be able to sort of put that information back to make it available. Um, Sean mentioned the previous approvals that city council a, approved the specific plan and the development agreement and made the statement of uh, overriding considerations for the environmental impact. Um, that allows us to be at this meeting now to be talking about the removal. Um, and. I, Sean had this exact diagram, which is perfect. This is really showing why we're removing it. It's not just because um, we want to, it, it really does impact the ability to construct that garage. At the original meeting in August, you know, somebody asked, is it possible to build a building that the tree is saved? The answer to that is certainly yes. Um, it is possible that the garage is not in that area. And, and that would mean that those garage and building would have to be oriented in a, in a different configuration. Um, that would mean that the park and the plaza, that central gathering location, would be significantly impacted and the parking would have to be reconfigured, which would likely result in above grade parking. Um, all of the parking today is below grade, which we see as a community benefit. Let's put the parking underneath the ground, not sort of at grade. Um, so I, I just reiterate, it is possible. It's significantly inferior in our mind, which is why um, we're proposing to remove it and why um, staff is, is supportive of that. Um, here's a little bit more detail about what we're proposing um, specifically. Uh, we're proposing to remove the one redwood tree and to replace that one tree with, with two new redwood trees. Um, I've, I've laid out here 48 inch box, um, which is sort of the size of the base of the tree. Um, again, that's feedback from the planning commission on sort of sizing um, and plant those in locations that expand the size of the grove. This northernmost number six tree is, is a little bit outside of the grove. It's a little on its own. We're going to expand the grove and, and, and put those trees at areas where it's more visible. We mentioned rededicating one of the new trees to, to Mr. Sunnyvale, Manuel Vargas. Um, and it's our proposal to dedicate the second tree to this new public plaza. Um, I'm happy to have a conversation with you all if you have other ideas um, about what, what that second tree could be dedicated to. There, there's lots of good options. 2020 has been a heck of a year, um, and there's a lot we really could and maybe should celebrate. So I'm happy to discuss that further. Um, I, I mentioned the reinstallation of the plaques um, to, to outline the history of, of these trees so that you know, all the community members coming here really understand what they're walking through. Um, I'll go into more detail on this muse, um, but it's really to build up um, the, the, from the ground level up to those trees so that people can kind of meander their way through and experience them really at, at, at eye level rather than them being you know three four feet above them so we're going to ramp up slowly to get to that elevation sean mentioned we, we are going to mill the redwood tree on site and um i'm hoping to make that wood available for public use so you know we'll, we'll turn it into lumber 
And if a community member wanted to come down and, and take some of that and use it for a project at their home, we'd love to do that, um, sort of making it available. And I, I've heard you guys loud and clear on sort of finding an opportunity to reuse this on site. Um, we, we can do that. We can continue to discuss it. Um, we've talked about benches in the past. Uh, I, nobody wants to hear this, uh, but it, it's unfortunately the, the facts. Public Works has very strong opinions about what kind of benches go where. And there's a city standard bench. So, um, I'm sure we can find a way to deviate from city standard for, for something like this. But um, that has been kind of one of the hurdles of, of getting uh, a bench out there that's made of the redwood. But we can talk about that first. Excuse me, Travis, about three minutes left on your presentation, please. Thanks, Joey. Um, we'll, we'll continue to store the wood and we will look for opportunities to use that wood. We'll find a way to do it. Um, we've, we've talked about doing a very large slab, which is where the wood's a little thicker and you can use that as a counter, um, indoor, outdoor, et cetera. Um, happy to talk more about that when I've got a little more time here. But these, this is a, a top-down view of the plaza. You can see where we're putting those two new trees sort of more in the grove. Again, the arrows try and demonstrating the views around the site that those new trees are, are sort of expanding where you can see the grove from. As I walk through a couple of pictures here, we're just zoomed in slightly. Um, this is walking uh, east on McKinley. You can see the AMC marquee through the transparent trees. I'll note just anecdotally, we're planting something like 50 additional street trees. These two trees we're talking about are not the only two trees we're planting here. Um, but you can see the two new trees make the grove uh, appear larger and easier to see. And then as you walk your way through, you can see this stepping you're, you're, you see here, that, that's the grade differential we're picking up. And we're on a ramp right now, making our way to the base of these trees as, as we're sort of wandering through this muse from the gateway to Whole Foods AMC uh, off there in the, in the distance. And, and you can start to see this is really an experiential um, walk through these redwood trees. Um, the plaques are not shown in this rendering right here, but those would be visible. and allow you know young kids to learn about the history as well as anybody just walking through we think this can be really special um, and separate uh, this large gathering place from other places where it's a lot of concrete we've heard some feedback on plaza del sol and people not loving that space because it is so um paved uh and this is an opportunity to get people up get people under get people in shade and, and experience that that soft foliage um, I, I'm getting close to wrapping up here, but but really just a couple other images of kind of this muse through the trees. Um, and you can see this this decking here is is allowing us, is sloped up to get up to that height where we apex um, and then go back down on the backside. And and you know, we're we're thrilled with this plaza and are really um, continuing to to push forward on what's possible on the peninsula. Um, that's really all I've got. Um, I, I will pause here and uh, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them and uh, we look forward to your consideration this evening. Thanks. Uh, I will say one more thing. John Leffingwell Arborist is here to answer any technical questions that may come up as well as the city's arborist. Um, and Pete from Bionic is, is able to answer any more technical questions related to the future construction of that park. Uh, Chair, you're on mute. Come, Chair Larson, there's a there's a number you have to hit on your phone. I think somebody. Chair will Larson, know. it'll be a star nine to unmute your phone, please. Uh, it'll be star nine on your on your phone to unmute. Chair, sure, are you still calling it? <clears throat> calling in? Chair Larson, I think you've unmuted, unmuted your computer, but you need to type into your telephone the star nine and then remute on your computer. Thanks, Travis. We have someone that um, would like to speak as an attendee for AL. 
George, should we let well, that? Uh, Huey, for, first we have to get to the, the commissioner uh, yeah. questions and comments. So Chair um, Larson on your phone, uh, star nine. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. It was it was a star six, as it turns out. All right. Do we have a conversation going here with this applicant? Well, Chair, if you want to open up to any of the uh, commissioner comments or questions for the applicant. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, go ahead. Um, I have a question about whether you've talked to maybe the Arts Council or, or Commission about what to do with the redwood tree um, parts, because they may be able to come up with something clever for the space, because we're in a world of uh, photo ops, so maybe something along those lines would be good. Yeah, we've been in deep commission, uh, commission, we've been in deep communication with the Arts Commission on our, our general arts program. We have a master arts program as part of our downtown development. Um, two individual art projects have, have been approved by that commission. And amazingly enough, the city council of Sunnyvale is approving all art downtown. Um, they review individual art pieces. I kid you not. Um, those two pieces, neither of them integrate uh, uh, wood specifically. I, I'm, I'm coming back to your question, Commissioner Hopkins, I promise. Um, we have been bringing and continuing to work with a, a consultant who, who gathers together proposals from artists. And one of the um, options on the table is to, to find an artist who works with wood and, and bring a, a proposal forward to the Arts Commission. Um, that, that's the process we've laid out today. I have not identified an artist yet um, without knowing if the project is um, going forward. It's a little hard to say with any confidence sort of what's going to be possible. And I, I say what, the project going forward because it's not approved by the planning commission yet and it's actually not able to go to planning commission until this body hopefully approves the tree removal um so we've sort of an order of operations problem a bit here um i love the idea they will continue to be deeply involved in the art um and all in downtown and, and there is absolutely a place for art in that plaza um i don't know joey if we're able to pull open that um slide deck uh, opportunity but i could show commissioner hopkins the the area we think is likely to be used for art if I can't show you the exact. Thank you very much, Trey. So you, this planner right here, Commissioner Hopkins, has been kind of ID'd by um, our arts team as a potential location for, for something monumental art-wise, um, something with a little bit of verticality, something that's a little playful, um, really to, to bring people around the corner, sort of an aha moment, if you will, as someone comes down Murphy. Um, so it's certainly something we'll look at and um, would love to bring forward a proposal to the Arts Commission in the future. Now, this is Commissioner Larson. Uh, should that decision be made before that tree is milled? Is that a question for me, Commissioner uh, Chair Larson? Yes, should that decision be made as to how the wood will be used before the tree is milled? It may impact how that tree is cut. Yeah, I think that's, that's a reasonable question. Uh, my opinion would be no, we're gonna mill the tree into a variety of, of shapes and sizes. It, it's, a, it's a fair amount of wood. Um, and we can do, you know, metaphorically some two by four, some two by sixes, some slabs, some live edge. Um, and we can do a variety of different um, cutting options that, that the artist, it, it, if we go down this path, um, could make use of. We're also uh, continuing to evaluate the opportunity to do those sort of public benches to reuse them or upcycle them um, in a more sort of useful way rather than an artistic way, um, which I think is is worthy of consideration as well. And I personally am excited about offering some of the wood to the community members. Like if I live in Sunnyvale and um, I've got a, a, a an entryway, a foyer, a foyer, if you will, um, I'd love to do a live edge table right there. And and I can't think of a better. Um, opportunity to, to do something meaningful than to use something that's actually from Sunnyvale. So I, I'm hopeful that there are others that feel the same way. Anything else, commissioners? Um, I have a comment. Um, thank you for answering my earlier question um, regarding reuse of the wood on site. Um, I 
just want to say I appreciate the design intent of sort of honoring and featuring the trees that will be left. Um, I think, you know, especially in contrast with that image you showed of them sort of constrained in that mall, like this is the life that, you know, they, <laughs> they deserve, they'll be enjoyed by the community um, and really, you know, preserving um, a piece of history means being able to experience it and enjoy it. And um, so I thank you for the design and um, I look forward to, you know, using that plaza. <laughs> Yeah, thanks to Pete and the Bionic team. This has really been their baby for two, three, four years now. And uh, we fell in love with it. And it was just a great idea, but thank you very much. Anyone else? Any further comments, commissioners? All right, then is this a point where we uh, proceed to 20929? Uh, so, so, Chair, just want to make sure that uh, you're going to open it up for the public hearing, see if there's any uh, members of the public who wish to speak on, on this item. All right. And Chair of the public has yeah. uh, three minutes to, uh, to speak. All right. Anyone? A member of the public Chair, who would like to we have uh, two speakers and the attendees having their uh, hand raised. Uh, one is the first one will be from A.L., um, Al, go ahead and uh, proceed. It'll be a star nine. All right. Uh, okay. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Good. So I have been a Sunnyvale resident for maybe. Hey, Ma'am, can you uh, identify uh, your name, please? Oh, uh, you mean the real name or yes. just a. Uh, just so we get, just so we have it for the minute, meeting minutes. The, the real name? Okay. So my name is Ru Wang, and I have been Sunnyvale resident for maybe 20 minutes, uh, tw 20 years. Um, I have been uh, part of the uh, community garden for more than 10 years. Uh, anyhow, so I love Sunnyvale City. And uh, I love the, the trees, the plants. Uh, my question is, when I look, when I see the presentation that has the projective of what that corner look like, I have a feeling of um, concrete forest. So all these high rise, not really that high, but the, though these uh, buildings, and I feel that it's very, uh, what do you call those, uh, uh, like there's not, not much space uh, for Sunnyvale. Uh, and I think as it goes, Sunnyvale is not gonna have more land for open space. It's only gonna be worse. So that's the first thing. So my, my question for the alternation is that, well, what is the cost or what are the concerns that if we alter the uh, the uh, parking garage so that you know it can go a little bit higher but to give more open space to the public that's one thing and the second thing is if we have to cut down the tree uh, I want to know how old is the tree and uh, uh, what happened you know, as since the tree was born, what happened in this piece of land? What's the history? And, you know, like maybe there were hundreds of trees at the beginning and then now it's only six left or five left. And uh, if we really, really need to cut it down, one thing is that we heard that Big Basin Visitor Center was burned down. And can we do something to do that? You know, like to educate the public about the, redwood tree, the life, the, the environment, you know, where it, this land is supposed to be, uh, I don't know, 100 years ago or something like that. I think it's probably better than just making a few benches. That's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Someone else? 
Yes, Chair, we have a um, speaker with the last three digits, 993. Go ahead and uh, speak, you'll have three minutes. Could this speaker identify him or herself by name? It'll be a star nine for the speaker to um, unmute yourself. Uh, speaker with the last three digits of 993, go ahead and uh, speak if you will. Um, press, pressing star nine on your telephone. And Joey, it was a star six for me to get my phone to, uh, so I could be heard. Okay. Okay, go ahead and go ahead and 993, you're unmuted. Um, okay. fo phone number nine. Okay, there you are. Uh, public speaker, uh, 993, it shows that you're unmuted. You can go ahead and start speaking. Um, just a random question. Commissioner, uh, or excuse me, Chair Larson, your, your phone number doesn't happen to end in 993, does it? No, it doesn't. Okay. I'm the 352. Got noted. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's, um, phone number with 993. I do see some, um, the way Zoom is, it shows that it looks like you're trying to talk. However, the audio is not um, transferring over. Um, 993, maybe you could um, go ahead and Press. Uh, they can uh, hang up and try calling again. Either, uh, yeah. If you could either hang up and call again, or um, try try raising your hand and um, by hitting uh, star nine. Yeah, George. It looks like. Um, they're trying to speak because I do see like volume. Yeah, so I, I see that. I see that too. Um, yeah, you know, maybe if, if they want to um, hang up and try again, um, or uh, uh, chair, if, if we want to see if there's any other speakers, then we can get back to uh, 993. Yes, I'm sorry. Did that again, please? Okay, 993. Yeah, it looks like they're, they're hanging up. They might be trying uh, again here. Is there anyone else in the attendees uh, that would like to ask a question? Any other members of the public, uh, if you have any uh, comments you would like to make for, the, for this, this item? I don't see anyone uh, pressing star nine on the uh, on their telephone or raising their hand. So, Chair, we could either continue, and if the caller calls back, we could reopen that portion if you, if you like before uh, a right. motion is made. It looks like they it looks like they've rejoined, uh, Joey. Okay. Okay, go ahead, please. Okay, nine nine. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Ah, finally, thank you. My name is Barbara Brunasso. 
I love the beautiful and thoughtful design with the sloping wooden path through the grove. But I was curious to know, what is the undue hardship additional cost to build three extra walls around the tree? I know aesthetically it might look unusual to have a garage building, you know, surrounding a tree. And, you know, in terms of the actual footprint of parking spaces lost, might it be four or so parking spaces actually lost? And I don't know what the, um, like I said, what uh, it's underground, correct? So it would be underground. So perhaps underground, it would not have that unusual look. Um, I don't know. I just wanted to know what that undue hardship extra cost to build it around the tree would be. And then, you know, I, I've not really heard of this issue before. So perhaps that was gone through and explained in previous meetings. And if the decision is, you know, set to, you know, take the tree and put it to good use, I was thinking perhaps if that's the alternate path, maybe a cross-section plaque would be very interesting to have as they had at the big basin. Um, I don't know if it would be really large, four feet across, I think it was mentioned, but it would still be interesting to put maybe some historical Sunnyvale information on a cross-section the way they've had done at the big basin where they've used it as a timeline. I thought that was very interesting. And then perhaps some information, you know, with this cross-section plaque could also be included um, on the Grove or other information on Redwoods, life cycle, or whatever. Um, but again, so if it's, you know, option A, you know, what is to build the extra walls? Uh, one wall is already planned. We just take three more. Um, and again, if that is already the decision to take down the tree, perhaps a cross-section plaque might be interesting. So that's just um, my question and my comment. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public who is in the queue to talk? Any other callers? There are callers, Chair. However, um, none of the uh, them are raising their hand okay. or asking to speak. I think we are supposed to limit this time to about 10 minutes for the public presentation. We perhaps have come to that point. Uh, yes, Chair. So if, if, um, if there's no other commission um, questions or, or, or discussion based on the public comments, uh, the applicant has an opportunity to make a final presentation uh, limited to 10 minutes uh, if they'd like. Um, and then the uh, public hearing will be closed and then the commission will deliberate on their uh, decision. All right, let's proceed with the next uh, 10 minutes. See if those who are presenting would like to close with additional comments. Definitely not going to take 10 minutes, but Joey, can you pull up in the slides one more time? The, the caller asked a, a very good question that we did go over at the last meeting, but I'm happy to share again. Um, uh, and Joey, maybe just either give me a control or go to the end. It is a little bit more challenging. Uh, I, 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 I can't remember, apologies, 993, uh, I don't recall your name. Um, than, than just building a box around the tree in the garage. Um, keeping the tree, as you suggest, as option one um, would, would basically necessitate moving the uh, entirety of the building. And I've got a, a very schematic view of what that would look like here. Um, you need to protect the, the root zone and, and create an area that's sort of free from excavation on all four sides. Um, so you, you see, so we've got to remove that garage from the area in question which, you know, this is a possible building, um, but it dramatically limits the ability to provide that open space, which the first caller, I think, correctly agreed or, or said, you know, open space is really paramount. Um, so we, we, we looked at an alternative like this, um, I think agreed with planning staff that this is significantly inferior, which is why we're proposing what we're proposing now. Um, I, I truthfully really like the cross-section idea offered by that, that second caller as well. Um, and I'm open to um, 
a suggestion from the commission on sort of how best to integrate that. I think that's a, it's a really strong idea. Um, and with that, it, I, I'm not sure if there's any other questions, but I, I think I have said everything um, I wanted to say, and I appreciate your consideration. We look forward to your decision. Any other comments from your organization? No, we're, we're good. Thank you, Chair. All right, then. Now, finally, I tried to do this 20 minutes ago. I think it's time for us act on 20929, discussion and adoption of final 2021. Uh, Chair, we, uh, we, we still need to uh, close the public hearing. And um, then, um, you know, the commission will, will discuss uh, their, their decision, deliberate, um, and then make a motion. All right, I will close the public hearing. Bring it back to the commission. See if they have any um, any final comments or, or questions for a motion. Commissioners, any other comments based on what we've heard? Um, one question. It sounds like, um, and my opinion is as well that reusing the tree on site in sort of some kind of meaningful way um, is an important um, thing, an important way to use the tree. Um, I noticed in the conditions of approval, reusing the tree on site is not listed in there in any way. Um, I don't know if it's possible to include some language like that or if that is un, you know, not standard. Um, I, yes, that is a condition we actually could add into the uh, recommended conditions of approval. So we'd probably just add a separate one um, after GC6 would be GC7. Um, and we can word it in a way that deals with um, milling the lumber and having it on site for reuse um, for a certain amount of time to be determined by the community development director. Will there be any opportunity for further input from the public regarding the use of the, the wood from that tree? As far as input, no, this would be um, the kind of end of that uh, response period. Um, they could easily coordinate with the applicant as far as um, getting access to any of the milled lumber um, in addition to any coordination they do with um, the Arts Commission. Okay. Any other comments, commissioners? All right, shall we move forward? I think we so need to I'll motion. You motion. Oh, I was on that. Um, I'll make a motion to uh, go with alternative, or I guess it'd be alternative two with the recommendations from uh, commissioner. Yes. Uh, Kaduri, sorry, am I saying that wrong? Am I slaughtering your name? I apologize if I am. Uh, but I guess so. Alternative two with the uh, alter or recommendations from uh, Commissioner Kaduri. That'd be to mill the lumber um, on site and then reuse it um, on site for the uh, community's benefit. Correct. And adding it into the, yeah, verbiage in the thing yeah do we have a second to that motion second that mm. Anna? yes thank you and we need to vote yes yeah, so if we can please have a vote on that okay All okay i can go ahead and i can yeah. um, i can go with the vote um okay chair larson Vice Chair Hopkins? Yes. Commissioner Wu? He um, signaled Raising with the raise yes. hand. I'll take it as a yes. Commissioner Gaudenti, you're the one who you seconded. So, Gaudenti? Yes. And Kaduri is. Uh, yes. Commissioner Kaduri? Yes. 
So we have uh, five yes and uh, one absent, which is uh, Commissioner Karumpas. All so right. the motion carries, Chair. Thank you, with, you all. The, with the modifications, the alternative two, as stated. All right. Consideration of any study issues? Is that next on our agenda? Uh, this would be the uh, work plan for for 2021. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's the last page in your um, agenda packet, but um, basically our, our standard um, items uh, that we usually discuss throughout the year um, in January. That's when we uh, we rank our uh, study issues, and we will have our three that we um, we heard last year that but have been uh, carried over uh, for uh, for this current year. Um, it is to, um, uh, one of them is to upgrade the, uh, the heritage resource inventory. Um, the other is a study issue on the contributions made by uh, Asian Americans and other uh, minorities in Sunnyvale. And the third is to uh, improve access uh, to uh, heritage resources in the city. So that will be um, uh, brought to you again uh, in January, so uh, the commission can rank, and uh, we'll we'll present that to the council for consideration uh, in next year's budget. Um, and then, you know, just some other standard items. We'll we'll have uh, opportunity to review the budget in May. Uh, also, look at another training opportunity, um, and then other standard items such as the selection and uh, of the vice chair and chair uh, in the summertime. And um, you know any other um, uh, resource alteration permits or landmark alteration permits uh, as we receive tonight that uh, might be coming up. Um, so far, I don't believe we have any in the process right now, but we may be getting um, you know maybe some um, uh, additions to um, heritage homes in Sunnyvale or uh, potential modifications to some of the buildings on, on Murphy Avenue. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just have to see um, as we uh, receive those applications. Um, and then throughout the year, the, uh, the commission can propose uh, study issues and uh, we would then uh, evaluate them and uh, bring back to the commission for a, uh, for a vote. Um, but yeah, just other, uh, that's really the, the main items we have planned, nothing uh, significant, but we'll see um, there's any action on the uh, the study issues that um, that pertain to the the commission? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any comment? Any non-agenda items? Uh, chair, I believe we that have to we... vote to approve them. Yes, we would have to make a vote to approve the work plan. Thank you. I will motion to approve the work plan. Any second? A second. Put that in. Thank you. Okay, uh, Chair Larson, let's take a vote. Yes. yes. Commissioner Wu, approve the work plan. Yes. Commissioner Godenti, did you make that? No, you seconded. Yes. And okay, we got the same vote five, zero, and Karumpas absent. Thank you. Go ahead and continue. All right. On agenda items and comments. Commissioners, anything? Information only? Reports, items? Nothing? Uh, nothing to report from, uh, from staff. Other than that, again, just want to, uh, to welcome and thank Commissioner Kapuri for this being her, her first meeting. And uh, yeah, we, we hope to have um, another one soon, but yeah, de definitely plan for, uh, for January. Uh, for our, our ranking of the study issues. Um, but if we receive any um, applications that are ready for the, the commission's review uh, next month, then we'll, um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll inform the commission. But um, otherwise, we don't have any other um, planned items for, for next month. Okay. Well, George, thank you for getting me through this meeting. 
Oh, thank you. No, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that. that out, All right. Anything else? If not, we will adjourn at 8.05. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Good night. Pleasure to join in.